Something you may have noticed as you browse eBay searching for Switch or PlayStation 5 systems, accessories, games, is there's no shortage of knockoff systems for those platforms, mostly because it's very popular to search and attempt to buy those devices. So when I saw the fake PS5 and now the fake Switch Lite, I had to at least pick them up so we could take a look at it and that's what we're gonna do here today. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button, and if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. I saw this one when I was browsing eBay. It was about $30, and it promised to have thousands of games packaged in, which is kind of expected with a lot of these knockoff systems out of China, but let's, let's start with the front of it here with the box. This has blue on the front. It's a new color, and it says there is happiness in life that's that's kind of reassuring on the back it's black and there is happiness in life this is supposed to be the blue variant okay so they have it marked off here well it's like the light blue i get yeah okay so there's dark blue gray and I don't have any light blue on either side. This must just be like a generic box that they use for it, so they don't have to have multiple different boxes for each color. So there's like yellow, light blue, like a dark blue, and then a gray, and you can pick from them uh, on like eBay or anywhere that they sell where you can kind of go through a drop-down menu. So I, hey, there you go. They just have the same poorly Photoshopped box for each one. It says game player on top, very generic name there. Uh, this does have a model number. It's X20 Mini. And it looks like it supports H.264, HD Ready, USB, all of this. Let's go ahead and open it up. So it looks like inside the system is at least encased in cardboard. So there is some packaging involved. We have the game manual. And hey, they gave us some headphones that actually feel very very uncomfortable it's like really hard plastic here with no cushioning and then we have our usb cable here it's the same kind that works for like the playstation 3 controllers so looking at the manual very very quickly not much going on in the manual itself although i am noticing something here with the button layout so if you look here they have like different functions for each button with these arrows pointing to them and they tell you what they do. Nothing is pointing to the, the minus or the plus button, which makes me think those are like painted on or, or essentially just there to make it look like a Switch Lite, which is something we can verify pretty quickly by just sort of taking a look here at the X20 Mini. Yeah, these buttons, <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't really call them buttons, these plastic pieces are just sunken in. It's pretty much flush. It's not just like painted on a decal or something like that. That That's actually like plastic that they've cut out and then put there. You're, you're not pressing down on it or anything like that. Uh, so just decoration, again, to make it look as close as they can, I guess, to a, a Switch Lite. That's the biggest thing is I see this all the time with these different knockoff systems is they choose one that's very popular, in this case, a Switch or Switch Lite, and they just try to model it after it as much as possible. The D-pad is massive though, in regards to the rest of this device. I mean, A, B, X, and Y here are about the same size just in general in this like part of the system as the D-pad. The joystick is, oh, this is weird. It's, so this is like a joystick similar to what we have with the PSP where it doesn't angle either way. It just kind of floats around. I guess you all say like a, like a 3DS, but this one, oh, it like, it's loose so it just rotates around so picture that as you're trying to move this it keeps rotating uh that's not great you also have start select and then looks like v minus and v plus so i guess these are just the volume buttons there's no like volume rocker on the bottom an sd card slot with an sd card i assume it's eight gigabytes as is being mentioned here and this is probably where all of those games are that are supposed to be loaded yep eight gigabytes. I double checked the listing. I think it mentioned like 3000 games on here. And by the way, this is supposed to be able to play PS1 games. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, microphone, there's USB, headphone jack, and our on off switch. There are some shoulder buttons here that are very tough to push in. It's like a tactile press and they're sort of angled out outwards. Let's peel this plastic off and we'll just go ahead and fire it up there see what we get. 
I also noticed that there is no like plastic where this LED is. So it's not really diffused or anything. You can see the LED if you look at it <laughs> at the correct angle where the board is. All right, so here's our main menu. We have, oh, okay. Oh, it's, uh, it has to load the card. Okay. Game, videos, music, ebook, folder, calculator, pictures. This just reminds me of those like all in one systems that are very, very common, just floating around Amazon. Oh, there's so many handhelds for it. Uh, this thing is moving essentially in frames. <laughs> on the, like you can see the, the fr each individual frame as it scrolls there. Maple Story, there's Raiden, Bare Knuckle. Contra, I guess these are just games that show up for some reason on the main screen. Let's just, I, I guess we'll just go into game. I'm not really interested in like eBooks or calculators or anything for this. All right, SFC, so there's our Super Nintendo, there's our Genesis. The NES for some reason is like a handheld. It doesn't even have the correct controller next to it. MAME, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color. Oh. Well, there's supposed to be PlayStation 1 games on here. So the listing on eBay mentions PlayStation 1, but like I'm even looking through the folder system here and I just have Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, MAME, Genesis, Nintendo, and then Super Nintendo. So I, I mean, I, I can't imagine the hard, if it's having a hard time like this, just navigating the menus, I can't imagine it would be able to even play PS1. I mean, here's Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Advance emulation can be kind of rough depending on the hardware, so why don't we just try one of these? We'll fire up Super Mario Advance, and the, yeah, there are a bunch of Mario games on here, uh, F-Zero, all the Nintendo games are, are present on the SD card, um, which, oh. Ah, some pretty good volume. Let me see, we'll... No volume meter for turning it down, but... Oh, I don't know that... Actually, now it's sounding a little weird. Yeah, the emulation's just a, a bit slow for the for the Game Boy Advance right now, at least what I'm seeing currently. Uh, and that, that's typical for, again, a lot of these knockoff systems. They'll just throw everything they can on it to make it feel like you're getting a lot of value from, I mean, $30, they're thinking 3,000 games, even if they don't play great. Uh, people who pick it up will be like, well, it was $30. Here we are, an absolute classic. I didn't see Mega Man X. All right, I cannot jump. B is not very sensitive. Uh, I I didn't see, why well, can't, hold on. Charge, B. Oh, why does that happen? So if I charge up and then I go and press B with the bottom part of my thumb, it just shoots it. I don't know why that is. Can I not press both buttons at the same time? That is gonna make Mega Man X, oh wow, look at that. That's gonna make Mega Man X very difficult. Oh no, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is not going well. So B in general is pretty behind when it's pressed. There's a lot of input, like I can't jump and fire at the same time. <laughs> and I I mean, the frame rate is tanking hard whenever any of that stuff happens. Like even a jump like this, normal jump, you would just, you would just make the move and, and no problem, right? I'm actually concerned about making this jump right now. Uh, okay, we got it. It's, uh, ooh. <laughs> This is not a very good experience with the X20 Mini. Maybe the maybe the joystick will, will solve that problem for, nope, oh wow, this is even worse. At least with the D-pad, I had some sort of accuracy with left and right, even though jumping and shooting wasn't great. Now I'm just all over the place with this joystick. This is, anytime those things hit the floor, I, I'm just, I'm in trouble. The frame rate's gone. Oh, this is just terrible. And that's just in Mega Man X. I know Mega Man X3 had some emulation issues there for a while back in the day, so I assume they just spared me that experience by not even including it on here. I mean, I wanna say I'm surprised with the performance, but I'm really not. Let's uh, let's open this up. There's only a couple of Phillips head screws on the back and we'll see what's going on inside. There were some pretty heavy duty clips holding it around the outside here that I had to kind of push in to, to break it apart, but there we have it, one large circuit board, a battery that's, uh, I mean, it's its a fairly small battery in terms of its size with the amount of space that at least is left open here. 1500 milliamp hour battery. Of course, it's directly soldered in because why wouldn't it be? And the speaker is sizable. And that is one thing I'll give this credit. If the emulation was better and the audio itself wasn't slow or, or, or kind of stuttering, 
this would put off a, a good experience, I would say, or better than I would expect. I'm only seeing a couple of Phillips head screws that are holding the single board down. Even the joystick on the bottom here is soldered in, which is what you'd expect from a system like this. They're trying to save as much as they can putting it together. So the last thing they want are a bunch of modular parts that would cost more. Have to pull this cap off because that's the only thing that was holding this board down after the screws come up and it just kind of lifts out of here. <laughs> and it looks like the screen wants to go with it. The screen isn't glued down anyway. In fact, it looks like they have like a plastic fastener with a piece of foam back here. That's one way to do it. Just uh, we can kind of loosen this screw and I think it'll just sort of push out of the way. There we are. The screen comes with it. That is, is that at least slotted in? Give me a break with it. It is, okay. So it's not soldered down. I mean, it's, it was just floating around inside of the the plastics here, so there, there's no real sealing around the edges. Technically, dust could get under it for what that's worth. The D-pad doesn't have any kind of like spike in the middle, so it can be pressed down completely and hit all the buttons at the same time. There's our plus and minus, by the way, just a couple of plastic inserts, not much else happening. I am curious as to why I couldn't jump and shoot at the same time or hold a charge down. The, the only thing I can just, think of is when I press down, it ended up just activating or letting go of that button. And then behind the screen, we have our main chip, the ATS-3603. From what I can tell, this is a pretty well-known chip that's fairly cheap and has been kind of repurposed out of China to be used in like these uh, knockoff devices, whether it's a Switch or like the PS5 or, or something like that. Those small generic handhelds that you see floating around that come with thousands of games. And from what I've seen, the specs, roughly 450 megahertz, uh, it's a 32-bit chip, 64 megabytes of RAM, kind of makes sense why some of those intensive Super Nintendo games like Mega Man X would slow down when stuff's happening on screen. This appears to be a chip that was mostly used for things like MP3 playback or even video, not necessarily emulating full systems, even if it's just like a 16-bit or even 8-bit system, or I guess with the Game Boy Advance, slightly more uh, ahead. It's just not a chip that's going to be able to run any of that well, especially with the kind of the generic firmware that's loaded up on some of these devices. But they're cheap and they're plentiful, so it's not shocking to find them in something like this. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for the Switch Lite knockoff from eBay or the X20 Mini. Certainly not a device I would recommend, even at $30, despite them advertising thousands of games coming on a, an SD card. But these kind of devices are all over the place and it's pretty common to see them pop up on sites like eBay and certainly on Amazon, but they're just not really equipped with the, the kind of chip, for example, in this one to play most of those games well, if at all. And then they also cheap out on the buttons, the, the connection points, basically everything. But I thought it'd be interesting to look at here and take a look and see what was going on inside. But let me know what you guys think about the X20 Mini and if you've ever ordered one of these, from Amazon or eBay, just kind of on a whim. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.